Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Pharmacist. Myself Dr. Hi Mahuti. In the present video, we will be discussing about what is structure based drug design. So, before beginning the video, uh, do like my video, subscribe to my channel, and if possible, share this video to your friends, which may be helpful to them. And it, uh, it also encourages me to make more and more videos. So, do consider to like, share and subscribe to my channel. So now let's begin our video. So before understanding what is structure based drug design, let us see some few examples which are available from structure based drug design. So the HIV protease inhibitors, the Amprinavir, the Nelfinavir and then we have Zanamavir which is a neuraminidase inhibitor and then we have the Erlotinib which is a, a metastatic lung cancer inhibitor. So these are only a very some of the examples, some of the drugs which are available as a result of structure based drug design. And in literature we have many more drugs which are available as successful inhibitors in the market. You can study them also. And HIV protease inhibitors are one of the first case studies studied in structure based drug design. So in structure based drug design, HIV protease inhibitors, there are a number of interesting case studies available for these inhibitors. So the HIV protease enzyme has a very unique uh, uh, 3D structure in which a structural water molecule is present and uh, a number of uh, case studies and interesting research topics are available in this HIV protease uh, enzyme because of its uh, that specific structure. So that I will deal in some other video. For now, uh, let's see what is this structure based drug design. So in structure based drug design, uh, we see that we have a number of diseases like tuberculosis, cancer, HIV, AIDS, etc. So what is the main causative factor for all these diseases? So the physical conditions and the stress related factors, everything the human behavior, the human habits etc all this lead to this diseases but uh, crucially what happens inside the body so because of the external factors internally what happens the alteration in the pathway of the gene takes place so as a result the gene is over expressed so every gene has a certain pathway which uh, acts in its day-to-day uh, -day life so in a healthy human being it has a natural pathway but in these disease conditions what happens this pathway is altered it is disturbed hence some uh, genes are over expressed so some proteins are over expressed and these over expressed proteins they cause these diseases so what we need to do is identify the structure of the protein which is causing the disease so if we identify the structure of the protein then we can successfully inhibit the protein using some small molecules or ligands using computational tools. So these computational tools they help in reducing the time and cost involved in drug designing. So uh, number of pharmaceutical companies. So this structure based drug design is an integrated branch in the pharmaceutical companies because it helps in reducing the time and cost involved in the new drug discovery phase. So uh, there are scientific groups especially devoted to structure based drug design which are working continuously to identify more new and effective inhibitors for the diseases which are already available and for new diseases also. So for all this ideally we need a structure of the protein. So this structure of the protein it can be identified using the structural databases. So the structural database like the protein data bank it has uh, crystal structures and NMR structures of the proteins deposited in the database. So we can use those crystal structures for our structure based drug design. When a structure is not available we can use a homology model of the protein. So we have homology modeling techniques also which help in building the 3D structure of the protein when a structure is not available. So uh, for the structure based drug design the main crucial uh, factor involved is the 3D structure of the protein so that we can study its active site and after studying the active site we can identify 
small molecules which can inhibit the protein in its active site and hence they reduce the over expression of the protein and thus help in controlling the disease. So this is the main uh, goal of structure based drug design identifying an inhibitor for the protein. For this I have taken the case study. So the case study is my own publication. So in this I have mentioned this in my previous video also in homology modeling. So in that video I discussed about how I built the homology model and in this uh, here I am giving an overall view. So this article itself is structure uh, titled as structure based drug design. So in this structure based drug design project what I have done is I have identified some inhibitors for a protein called mycolic acid methyl transferase MMA1. So this MMA1 is uh, useful in inhibiting uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis which is responsible for the disease tuberculosis. So this MMA1 it is a protein which is involved in the maturation of mycolic acids. So what I have hypothesized in this study is that if we can inhibit this MMA1 protein then we can control this disease. So already a number of drugs are available but still what we try to do is uh, to uh, develop more new and effective drugs which can act more effectively which can reduce the treatment duration which can reduce the side effects or toxicity related uh, effects. So hence the new drug discovery aims aims at identifying more effective inhibitors even though already some of the inhibitors are available or some drugs are available. So the goal of this new drug discovery or structure based drug design always is at identifying more newer and effective drugs than already available drugs. So in this study what I have done is I have taken this protein. So this protein it is not having any crystal structure available in the PDB that is a protein data bank. So what I have did is I have taken the sequence and built a homology model for this protein using modeler and then I validated the structure using different validation tools like Ramchandran plot, PROSA, ERAT etc. And then I have studied its active site so the active site of the protein I have studied it using uh, uh, CASTP, sitemap and patchdoc. So CASTP is a free online web server and then you have sitemap which is a Schrodinger program. So using these tools I identified the active site of the protein. Then I have taken uh, some databases, ligand databases and screened the molecules using the glide docking software. So after performing docking, I obtained some lead molecules. So after obtaining this lead molecules, what we did is we analyzed and studied the ligand and protein complexes. So when you study and analyze the protein ligand complex, you can understand how the interaction between this protein and ligand is taking place. So you, can, you need to study the binding affinity, you need to study the different hydrogen bonding interactions, pi pi interactions, von der Waal interactions, etc. So these interactions, they help in understanding how effectively these ligands bind to the protein. And then you can prioritize those leads based on this binding affinity, that is the docking score and the binding affinity. After that, you have to perform uh, some in silico screening like ADMET so that you have to eliminate potentially toxic molecules using Lipinski rule of 5, Jorgensen rule and many physicochemical uh, uh, properties are there. So based on those filters, we try to filter out the potentially toxic molecules and then prioritize the best molecule. After prioritizing the molecule, we try study the synthetic feasibility of the molecule. So first we need to check the novelty of the molecule whether it is already present or not and after checking the novelty we need to check for its synthetic feasibility and then we have to synthesize the molecules. So in that pattern I have synthesized the main top ligand of this study. After synthesizing it and conf confirming it using IR, NMR and uh, mass spectroscopy. 
I subjected the molecule for in vitro anti TB screening activity, and uh, that ligand uh, has given an activity of hundred microgram per ml. So the ligand is three uh, two morpholino estamido N three four dihydro four oxoquinazole in seven vial benzamide seven iri benzamide. So this is a very large molecule, and uh, I successfully synthesized this molecule. And subjected it to anti-TB screening activity, and it has given uh, some activity. Though it is not a very strong uh, activity, but it has given at least uh, some amount of activity. So this helped me in further uh, lead optimization of this molecule because it is having some amount of binding affinity. I have uh, changed some functional groups of this molecule in order to increase the activity of the molecule so this is known as lead lead optimization so this lead optimization study also i have published in another paper in a bmcl journal so that case study also i will make an another video but for this uh, because uh, this video is only about structure based drug design so i'll stop it here so for the structure based drug design so how i identified this molecule so for this uh, molecule i have taken a protein because that protein is not having any 3d structure i developed a model for that and i i identified the active site then performed virtual screening and then uh, performed the binding affinity analysis so this binding affinity analysis is done manually and visually and then the synthetic feasibility is checked after the synthetic feasibility is checked we synthesize the molecule and then uh, subject them to in vitro screening so here it is tb screening in case of cancer compounds it will be screening it will be screened against cancer genes and then the activity is tested so if the activity is satisfactory we will take this compound only but if it is not satisfactory what we do we change the uh, or modify the functional groups present in the molecule and we try to design uh, some more some more new molecules so this is known as lead optimization so in any structure based drug design so the same steps are followed and we we identify a inhibitor for this so called protein so this is about structure based drug designing i hope you understood the video and so if you like the video so do not forget to like share and subscribe to my channel Okay, so that's the end of the video. I hope you liked the video and it was informative. And uh, before closing the video, I would like to add some more points. Uh, that is, uh, so you are all computer experts. So all the computer aided drug design searching students are computer savvy people, I suppose. So you can visit the community tab in this channel. So where I'm uh, uploading some information regarding some books or useful. Uh, study material and some memes also and i have linked to my fb group that is molecular modeling and docking for science students and a link to my telegram channel known as chem genie if you are interested you can join these groups which are given in the description and also if you want to make videos on any specific uh, topic also you can mention in the comment section i already received some comments to make videos on advanced topics in scoring functions and the use of machine language and artificial intelligence in drug discovery so very soon i shall be making videos on them also also i would like to mention that if anyone wants they can volunteer in my work so making the videos it takes a lot of time and effort so i need if anyone can help me with my work so in, i need help in content writing and uh, video making and the making of powerpoint presentations so if you are interested you can mail me at this email id that is info.pharmagist@gmail.com so this p is small p info.pharmagist@gmail.com i'll mention in the description box also this email id so if you are interested you can mail me at this uh, email id if you want to learn any specific course also 
you can mail me in this mail id so thank you for watching my video see you in the next one